Hello everyone, this is Reshmi from MTech Second Year VLFI. Under the guidance of Amit sir, today I would like to present a project paper on the topic Three Dimensional Network on Chip Router Architecture for Multiple Core System on Chip. First of all, I would like to explain why I have chosen this project. The reason is, with the advancement of technology in VLSI design, network on chip is a trending topic in which many researchers are working on it. Here in this project, I have concentrated more on router architecture of a network on chip. These are the contents which I am going to explain today. We know that system on chip is an integrated circuit that integrates all the components of a computer or electronic system into a single chip. Network on chip is a communication subsystem on an integrated circuit typically between different intellectual property cores in a system on chip. Therefore, network on chip is a scalable and flexible communication infrastructure for core based system on chip. Therefore, the reusability of resources is also very high. Three dimensional network on chip has been introduced as a promising solution offering lower power consumption and higher speed. One of the important design issues of three dimensional network on chip implementation is the routing algorithm, as it controls the path decision that a fleet has to follow while traveling along the network. This has a direct impact on system performance. Network on chip is a new prototype for complex system on chip. We know that two dimensional network on chip has got higher bandwidth and higher performance compared to bus based architecture. As the future applications are getting more complex and if click on layers on chip increases, three dimensional network on chip has been introduced to overcome the demerits of two dimensional network on chip. The figure shown represents the three-dimensional network on chip architecture. It has got main components such as IP block, switch and interconnect. IP block is nothing but the core which is a functional block that runs the application, switch or router. It is used in order to send messages from one module to another. It consists of a buffer input, interconnect matrix and output buffer. Interconnect or link provides physical connection between two nodes. Network interface is a protocol converter that maps the processing node input-output protocol into protocol used within network on chip. The figure represents the three-dimensional network on chip router. Each router has seven input-output ports. One goes to the east direction, another to the west, followed by north, south, upper layer, lower layer, and one to the IP core itself. We have to eliminate any unused links that have no connection in order to reduce the power consumption. This is the proposed three-dimensional network on chip router architecture. In this router architecture, we can see input port, switch allocator and crossbar circuit. As I have told, one of the most important design choices of three-dimensional network on chip implementation is the routing algorithm as it controls the path decision that a fleet has to follow while traveling along the network. In this input port, each of the module is composed of two elements that is input buffer and root module. Here, the incoming data will be taken inside this input port and switch allocator will give two signals out in which the control signals it contains information needed by the crossbar circuit about the scheduling result whereas the switch grant signal is sent back to the input port module. The crossbar circuit the switch allocator sends the issued switch control signal to the crossbar circuit. It represents the final pipeline stage where information about the selected input port and its desired output port are received. Steps involved in this routing algorithm is First, data will be stored in the FIFO, which is termed as buffer writing. Secondly, the routing calculation will be done, followed by the switch arbitration and crossbar transfer cell stage. Therefore, it pre-computes the next port direction of the downstream router. It also adopts wormhole-like switching and virtual cut-through forwarding method. When the buffer size is equal to or greater than the number of plates, the virtual cut 
bathroom forwarding method has been applied and when the buffer size is less than the number of lips, it adopts the wormhole like switching method. The input port module. Each of the input port is composed of two elements, input buffer and root module. Incoming plates from different neighboring routers are first stored in input buffer and waiting to be processed. After being stored, the fleet is fetched from P4 buffer and advances to the next pipeline stage. The destination address, the X destination, Y destination and Z destination are decoded in order to extract information about the destination no location. The next port identifier pre-calculated the previous upstream node and the values are sent to the root circuit then the next port direction of the downstream node is being determined. At the same time, the next port identifier is also used to generate the request for switch allocator to use selected output port via switch request and port request signal. Switch allocator block diagram. It contains two components that is toll go and matrix arbiter scheduling. Toll go flow control module uses two signals that is stop in and data sent. Stop-in signal is sent to the downstream node indicating that the buffer is almost full and only one slot is available to host the one last fleet. And the data sent signal is issued when the fleet is transmitted informing that one slot is in the buffer is released. And the matrix arbiter scheduling, it accepts all requests from the different input ports. It also verifies scheduling matrix, compare the priorities of different requests and give grant to the one possessing highest priority in the matrix. As I have told, switch allocator has got two components that is stall go flow control and matrix arbiter scheduler. The stall go flow control, it decides whether the buffer is full or not. Whereas matrix arbiter scheduler, it will decide the priority level of the request received. The functionality of crossbar circuit is that it allocates appropriate channel for transmission to the decoded next port. When all the fleets of a packet are transmitted, the tail bit informs the switch allocator via tail send signal that the packet transmission is completed and can free the used channel so that it can be exploited by another packet. The figure represents the input loading in P4. That is nothing but the buffer writing. Here, some values are designated to the ports. During the area analysis, we have used round-robin method with which the number of total logical elements is 1308. During the area optimization, when we see without the round-robin method, the number of logical elements used was 1469. But after applying round robin method, the number of logical elements used is 1308. Therefore, uh, the area will be reduced to some amount. The speed analysis has been done by applying the pipeline technique with which we have found 240.27 MHz. During the speed enhancement, we found that Without pipeline technique, it was 217.34 MHz, but by applying pipelining technique, it has been increased to 240.27 MHz. While analyzing the power, we have used gated clock technique, where we can avoid unnecessary transition by disabling the unused components in any direction. Now let us see the amount of power dissipation reduced by applying gated clock technique and without applying gated clock technique. Without applying gated clock technique it was 130.25 mW and after the application of gated clock the power dissipation has been reduced to 125.34 mW.
finally i would like to conclude the presentation by stating that here in this project we have introduced an efficient routing algorithm that aims to reduce the overall system area communication latency and power consumption while enhancing the system thank you everyone for watching this video